We have tied the Jimmy Houston knot probably, I don't know how many times on television over the last 42 years. This knot, by the way, uh, I developed when we had a testing machine. We used to have an old testing machine called R2-D2. And uh, Berkeley had given us that testing machine, and we used it out at store promotions and boat shows all around the nation. And my buddy Ricky Green, Ricky Green was a tremendous tournament fisherman. Ricky uh, qualified for 13 consecutive Bassmaster Classics at one time, which it, at the time he did it was a record. And uh, he was just a tremendous uh, tournament fisherman. Uh, he did well in all the tournaments. He was known for big bass, so he caught the big bass in, I think, more tournaments uh, than anybody at that time had ever caught the big bass in a tournament. And, you know, catching a big bass in a tournament, really, uh, is mostly luck. Uh, but because, you know, a lot of people catch big fish, and a big bass is usually you might, you might catch an 8.10 and somebody else caught an 8.9 or an 8.8. So you're lucky to have done that. But Ricky was a big bass fisherman. And, uh, and we would go and work these store promotions with this R2-D2 machine, and we'd tell people, do you tie a good fishing knot? And they'd say, oh, yeah, I tie a great one. So we'd have them tie the knot on that machine, and then we'd uh, tie the knot on a, on, a, on a bait or on a dummy bait, and then we would put it on that machine, and the machine would go, and you'd see their knot just kind of unravel and come undone. The line wouldn't even break. And you may have line that breaks, let's say, at 20 pounds, and their knot would come undone at, say, six, 65 or 70% of that, maybe 12 or 14 pounds. And so you'd say, wow, maybe you tied a bad knot. And they'd say, let me tie it again. And they'd tie it again, you put it on there and do the same thing. And, 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 you know, we knew because we'd watch people tie literally thousands and thousands of knots. We knew when they tied their knot. We knew, we'd tell them ahead of time what was going to happen. But with that, that's a machine break their line or untie their knot and almost no one could tie a hundred percent knot uh, a palomar knot if you tie it really really well probably about 60 or 70 percent of the time the knot will hold and the line will break for most of us like me if i tie a palomar knot which is a good knot if i tie a palomar knot it uh it it breaks about if it goes 100%, maybe about 2 out of 10 times. So about 8 out of 10 times, uh, the knot will break before the line does. So if your knot's break, if it's breaking at 20, maybe that knot breaks at 16 or 17 or 18 pounds. So Ricky and I played with literally hundreds of knot combinations. We tied knots every way you could tie, and, and we put them on that machine. Every time we didn't have a, a bunch of people around that we were tying knots on for, we would, we would practice tying knots. And we tied literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of knots. And I came up with what is now known as the Jimmy Houston knot. And, uh, and I tied that knot and, and put it on that machine, and the line broke at the 20 pounds or whatever it was, 22. The knot was still on the lure. And uh, th now this bait right here, this is a bait that I used in the Champlain tournament. I caught all of my fish on it the first day of the tournament. I had a horrible tournament down there. You know, I, uh, I didn't make the money in the tournament, but I did uh, get enough points to actually qualify to fish the FLW tournaments again next year, and I don't know whether I'm going to or not, but, you know, the last couple, two or three tournaments, I've gone from uh, up in the 20-something in the standings down to really low in the standings, but, uh, but I did qualify to fish the tournaments again, so I, I did a video and we talked about this might be my last tournament, Chickamauga. Well, it wasn't. Uh, Champlain might be, but uh, if I was to give odds, I'd say if you're a betting man, take whatever odds are and bet that Jimmy's going to fish again next year. A lot of it just depends on sponsorship, but, uh, uh, you know, I just, I'm not ready to quit. And uh, let, let me tell you in that tournament what happened down there. This is kind of crazy, but, you know, I didn't get to practice for that tournament. I, I called my boat up there to Champlain, Plattsburgh, New York. I left it on a, uh, on a Saturday. I flew to, I drove to Montreal, flew to Winnipeg. Uh, 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 that was there with the Shell people and my buddies at O'Reilly Auto Parts. And uh, I flew back on Sunday night, uh, uh, Wednesday night, got back in there late Wednesday night, put my boat in the water early the next morning, and went out and fished that tournament. Now, since I had not practiced, one of the things that you can do on a lake like Champlain that's got so many fish is you can simply drive around until you find four, five, six boats in an area, maybe a big flat, maybe in a, you know, going down a bunch of reed lines, and there's boats scattered you know, down those reed lines. You can drive around and find where those people are, pull into that area, and you'll probably catch fish. They're there for a reason. There's a lot of fish in that reason, uh, in that area. Some of that, some of us call that, <laughs> some of us call it the bent pole pattern. You know, I mean, you wait until you see somebody with set their hook and you go fish where they are. <clears throat> and and, and a, lot of, a lot of people do that. Some of the pros do that. And, but, but let me tell you, since I had not practiced in that tournament, I had just said in my mind, I was not going to pull in and fish where anyone was fishing. If there were three or four boats in the area, I was going to intentionally bypass that area. Even if it was an area that I've caught fish in in the past, 
at, uh, at Champlain or even in areas that I knew was a good area, uh, if there were boats there, I wasn't there because I, personally, I just didn't think it was fair because I knew I hadn't been there in practice because I, I didn't practice. So I knew I hadn't been there. So uh, I decided not to do that. And uh, I, I, the first morning of the tournament, I ran to a spot that, where I'd caught a lot of fish in years past. There were no boats there. And I got kind of excited for about the first 10 minutes. Now I realized, I wonder why there's no boats in this area. Well, it was because there were no fish in that area. And, uh, and that happened to me a lot, but I finally ended up catching a few fish both days of the tournament. First day of the tournament, I caught every fish on this bait right here. This is Jimmy Houston Legend Spinner Bait, uh, twin uh, Colorado blades. Now, this is the way that I rig them in a tournament. Uh, I, I have a trailer hook that I put on here, and the trailer hook flops. It's one that's, uh, that, that flops around. And if you'll notice, these hooks are pointed slightly upward, both the trailer hook and the main hook. You see that right there? It's pointed slightly upward. In other words, what I'll do in, uh, I don't know if i got something handy here, but what I do is like these hooks, I will take it, I'll get them right back here, don't get them around a the point, and I'll bend it up just a little bit like that. I'll just bend it up just a little bit. I'll do the same thing to the trailer hook. Now, it's almost not noticeable to anybody that's just watching. I'll be careful, don't get hooked. Bend it slightly upward. Nearly everybody's trailer hook when you take them out of the package, now be careful and don't get your pliers on the points of your hooks. When you take them out of the package, the hook is going straight across or it's going slightly downward. If you will open those hooks up just a little bit, you will definitely catch more fish per strike. In fact, you might catch 100 in a row and never miss one. Uh, but anyway, this is the way I rig them right here. I, I had, this is a fire tiger color uh, for the small mouth. I use a little, wire, a little uh, coating from, uh, from wire as my keeper. I've got a trailer hook that flops around. This is exactly, that's exactly the bait that I used to caught my fish the first day of that tournament. I think I caught, I don't think I caught one on spinner bait the second day. Okay, we were talking about tying this knot. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to try to get in as close as we can on this knot and tie this knot so you can learn how, because this is a pure 100% knot. This is only 12 pound test line that I've got here is what I was using up there in that tournament. Double your fishing line, get you a pretty good chunk of line. Don't, don't be stingy on your fishing line. Uh, fishing line is not very expensive, especially if you use high seas. Get you double your line, run your double line through the eye of the hook like I've done here. Drop the bait, don't hold the bait. I've got the double line on the index finger of my left hand, double line through the eye of the hook. I'm going to lay it over here on my index finger and I'm going to take hold of the bait, go underneath my finger and wrap it four times. That's right, four times. I think it's four, might have been five. Now, I've created this little loop right up here by my finger. Then I'm going to put this line right through that loop. Now, I've kind of tightened it down there. Wet it a little bit to hold the heat down. Cinch everything up. I'm pulling both lines. Now, what's left on there when you tighten it up, tighten that up, tighten the end up, put your finger in the loop, tighten that up, and you've got a pure 100% Jimmy Houston knot. Now, if you're using a drop shot, we've talked about a drop shot on some of the videos. If you're using a drop shot, you'll leave this tag on. <laughs> you'll leave that part on if you tie a Jimmy Houston knot on your hook. Now you put your drop shot on the end of this, and all you cut off is the loop. Cut off it. Now, if a drop shot, you cut the loop off. But now we don't want that on there. So what we're going to do then, we're going to simply take our, our cutters. We're going to go in here and come down real close. Cut off those three. Now you have a good, pure <coughs> Jimmy Houston knot. A good, pure Jimmy Houston knot. <coughs> will not break. I can pull that and pull that. The line will break. The knot will still be on the lure. Boy, I cut that close. <laughs> I cut that close. Hey, guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed that. We're out here working hard, doing videos all the time, and we really, really appreciate you watching. More than you can ever know. Be, here, be sure to hit that sub button and subscribe to our channel because we need every one of you. Hey, have a lot of fun. Let's go fishing.